I'm Dr. Rohit, and in today's session, I'm going to discuss about enzyme biotechnology. So let's first understand what do we mean by the term enzyme. Enzymes are biological catalysts, or you can say they are biocatalysts that speed up the biological uh, or biochemical reactions, which are both biosynthetic and degradative in nature inside the living cells. So in this definition, first understand what do we mean by the term catalyst. So catalyst is a substance that increases the speed of a chemical reaction, and in that reaction, the catalyst does not itself gets consumed. That means it remains as it is, but it speeds up the reaction. Okay. So now uh, coming to this biochemical reactions, both biosynthetic. Biosynthetic here means the, the reactions which take in place inside the living cells and the product of the reaction is a new molecule or a metabolite. Example of biosynthetic reactions are, uh, for example, nucleic acid synthesis, ATP synthesis. So these are the uh, these are the examples of biosynthetic pathways reactions and then degradative reactions where a metabolite is getting degraded. For example, Alpha myelase, which is an enzyme, it degrades the starch into glucose. Okay, so both the type of reactions are catalyzed by enzymes. So, uh, biochemically, when we say enzymes are thermolabile proteins which are produced by living cells, okay, living cells can be a microbial cell, or a plant cell, or an animal cell or a human cell, any kind of cell which is living. Okay, so here we have mentioned the term thermolabile means the enzymes, they are sensitive to the temperature. Okay, not just proteins, some RNA molecules have also been identified over the years, which have catalytic action. And those RNA molecules are known as ribozymes. Okay. Now coming to this, enzymes can be extracted. Now, here we have seen that they are produced by the living cells. Okay, so now um, they can be extracted from the cells. That means the cells which they have in which they have been produced, they can be extracted from those cells, and then the extracted enzymes are used to catalyze a wide range of commercially important processes. Okay, so enzyme biotechnology is the field where we produce the commercially important enzymes in the living cells majorly in the microbial cells and then we extract those enzymes from the cells and once they are extracted they are purified and after that they are used to catalyze a wide range of commercially important processes okay so this is what we are going to study in enzyme biotechnology so this word enzyme, this was first used or coined by a German physiologist, William Thune, in 1878 to describe the ability of yeast cell to produce alcohol from sugars. Okay. So let's take an example. In, the, in, in, in our lungs, this carbonic acid, it converts to CO2 and H2O, if we see this reaction at room temperature, it occurs at a very slow rate. To increase the rate of the reaction, we have to increase the temperature, okay? But human body cannot go beyond the temperature of 37 degrees. So to speed up this reaction, we have an enzyme which is carbonic anhydrase, which speeds up this reaction by the factors of 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 20, okay? Because the CO2 has to be produced from our body at a much higher rate. That's why this enzyme, carbonic anhydrase, it catalyzes this particular reaction. Okay. Uh, let's discuss the characteristics of enzyme in brief. Okay. So first, they're ubiquitous in nature, which means they are present everywhere in plants, in animals, or and in microbes. Second, they are highly specific, which means a particular enzyme will only promote one biochemical reaction 
with the particular substrate to ensure the synthesis of a particular product. Let's take an example. The starch is converted to maltose with the help of diastase enzyme and then maltose is converted to glucose with the help of a maltase enzyme. You cannot use maltase to convert starch to maltose. Okay, so they are very specific. Then third, they are not destroyed during the reaction. This is the property of a catalyst that it does not get destroyed during the reaction so that it is used over and over again. That means if we are using an enzyme for a particular commercial process, it will be cost effective because you can use the enzyme again and again. Okay, side reactions do not occur. Very true because if an enzyme is specific in nature, it knows to which substrate it has to bind so it will not produce any side reactions or side metabolites okay as catalyst they are required in very low concentration okay this is a property of a catalyst that it is required in a very low concentration substrate is produced uh, substrate is converted to a product with the help of enzyme now this uh, symbol shows that substrate and product they are in equilibrium when enzyme is present in the reaction okay and last but not the least the characteristic of enzyme many enzyme here to know that uh, not all not all enzyme but many enzymes require additional small molecules which are called cofactors for their activity uh, <clears throat> now let's see what are cofactors they are non protein in nature they can be divided into two major classes one is metal cofactors and second one is organic cofactors metal cofactors are also known as inorganic compounds here the example of enzymes are metal activated enzymes okay then this class of uh, organic cofactors can again be divided into two class one is coenzymes second is prosthetic groups so these coenzymes they are the cofactors which are covalently or non-covalently attached to the active site of the enzyme and it can be separated from, from the enzyme once the reaction is over. For example, thiamine pyrophosphate. Now when we talk about the prosthetic group, they are very tightly bound to the enzyme. It cannot be removed without damaging the enzyme. For example, NAD plus nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Here this E signifies enzyme i have used it abbreviation abbreviated form of enzyme okay so in this uh, diagram we can see this blue structure is epoenzyme which is the protein part it is the inactive form of the enzyme okay this black part is the cofactor which is the non-protein part when it joins with the epoenzyme it forms hollow enzyme hollow enzyme is epoenzyme plus cofactor it is the activated protein okay so there can be three type of bindings of the cofactor with the epoenzyme first is coenzyme second is prosthetic group and third is metal ion this red line shows the strength of binding between epoenzyme and the cofactors as you can see in coenzyme and in metal ion the binding is not very strong but in the case of prosthetic group the binding is very strong if we have to separate the prosthetic group it will damage the enzyme so this epoenzyme plus cofactor is called hollow enzyme okay enzymes are generally named by adding suffix is suffix means which we add after the word prefixes which we add before a word okay so enzymes are named by adding suffix as to the name of substrate or to the reaction they catalyze for example to the name of substrate here the lactose is converted to glucose and fructose the substrate is lactose and the enzyme which is converting this to glucose and fructose is lactase so substrate is lactose from here they have taken lact and they have added is so lactase this is the enzyme okay and then to the reaction they catalyze here the ethanol is converted to acetaldehyde this is the chemical formula of ethanol ch3 ch2oh and this is the chemical formula of acetaldehyde which is ch3 cho here 
what is happening in the reaction it is dehydrogenation is taking place okay so the enzyme which is used is alcohol dehydrogenase because ethanol is an alcohol and here dehydrogenation is taking place so, so the enzyme which is responsible for this reaction is alcohol dehydrogenase okay so this is the nomenclature this is how the enzymes are named okay <clears throat> let's discuss the source of enzymes which we generally use uh, for the pharmaceutical purposes or, or for the industrial purposes there are three major sources one is plants for example plant proteases like bromelain and pepain then we have enzymes from the animals like trypsin which is taken from the pancreatic gland of the animals pepsin which is taken from the stomach and catalase which catalase which is taken from the liver of the animal okay then we have microbial enzymes this is a very big class of enzymes which are generally used for the commercial or industrial purposes here we have example like alpha amylase which is produced by bacillus species then we have beta amylase which is produced by bacillus cereus then we have streptokinase which is produced by streptococcus species then we have catalase and pectinase pectinase which is produced by aspergillus niger then we have invertase enzyme which is produced by saccharomyces species so here these three enzymes they belong to the bacterial enzymes why because they have been produced by the bacteria and then these enzymes like catalase pectinase or invertase these are these are the example of fungal enzymes because they are produced by the fungus okay now let's see in brief how the enzyme is produced from the microbial cell so this flow chart uh, list, uh, see uh, see this flow chart very carefully we take the microorganism which can be the bacteria or fungus or the yeast cells this microorganism can be in the wild form or in the recombinant form what is this wild and recombinant form this we will study in the fermentation chapter in detail okay <clears throat> in short you can say recombinant cell is that cell where we have taken the gene which is responsible for the production of enzyme and we have incorporated that gene into a suitable microorganism okay we put this microorganism into the fermentation media so fermentation media it varies for bacteria fungus and yeast cells every cell every microbe they have a a uh, suitable fermentation media in which the cells of that microorganism grows okay so and then we put this mixture for incubation at optimum temperature ph uh, condition for sufficient time for example when we say bacteria cell it takes approximately 16 to 18 hours to grow and if we take fungal cells it can take up to three four days okay so after that incubation is over we have got a fermentation media which contains solid plus liquid means solid uh, solid mass will be the bacterial cells or the microbial cells and liquid is the fermentation media this mixture contains our enzyme now enzyme can be intracellular or extracellular if the enzyme is produced outside uh, if the uh, enzyme is extracellular it means <clears throat> that the microbe has produced the enzyme and it has released the enzyme into the fermentation media in the case of intracellular enzyme the enzyme is produced inside the microbial cell okay after that we separate the solid and liquid part if the enzyme is extracellular it will be present in the liquid part if the enzyme is intracellular it is present in the solid part we will rupture the cells and we take out the enzyme after that <clears throat> we perform a series of uh, purification process okay and after that we get the purified enzyme which is now ready for the commercial use here you can see the black part or the uh, steps which has been mentioned in the black color they are known as upstreaming means starting from the selection of microorganism till the production of our product 
this is called upstreaming and once the product is produced by the bacterial cells the how we separate it how we purify it okay how we retain its activity it all forms the process of downstreaming okay this is in short you can say a representation how the industrial enzymes are produced let's see the applications of enzymes or we can say applications of commercial enzyme commercial enzymes first is synthesis of antimicrobials uh, for example synthesis of 6 amino penicillinic acid by penicillin acylases then we have used enzymes to treat the disorders of the blood circulatory system for example streptokinase or urokinase which dissolves the fibrin clots inside the circulatory system then we have used enzymes in tropical preparations for example collagenases these collagenases are used in third degree burns or in the patients with diabetic ulcers then uh, we have used the enzymes for the synthesis of amino acids peptides and cyclode uh, cyclodextrins then we have also used enzymes for the therapeutic purposes okay for a therapy first is enzyme replacement therapy to replace the missing enzyme or organ malfunction for example adenosine deaminase uh, short form is ada for the treatment of skid which is severe combined immuno deficiency disease here what happens the adenoside is accumulated inside the patient's body so this enzyme it metabolizes the excess adenoside and uh, decreases the toxicity of the adenosine in the patients okay then we have also used enzymes as digestive aids for example a very common example in the lactose intolerance intolerant patients we have given uh, lactase supplements what these lactase supplements does they break down the lactose into the monomers which is glucose and galactose and they alleviate the symptoms or reduce the symptoms of lactose intolerance such as bloating gas and diarrhea an important uh, therapeutic use of enzymes is for the treatment of cancer a very good example is l asparginase what this enzyme does it uh, degrades the asparginine so the normal cells they can synthesize their own asparginine which is very important this asparginine is very important for the prolific activity of the cells okay but the cancer cells they cannot synthesize this asparginine and they die in the presence of this enzyme which degrade the asparginine okay this we come to the end of today's session i hope you like the video uh, if you like uh, my channel if you like the content do support it by subscribing the channel and if you have any comments to increase the uh, quality or the content of the videos i would really appreciate it please drop in your comments in the section thank you so much